morning and welcome to the next series of Meet Britain's Makers. Today we're joined by, by Gareth Jones, Director of uh, May, uh, Income Training. Uh, welcome Gareth. Thank you very much. It's great having you here today. Thank you. Um, you've been before at the, at the Made in the Midlands TV. Yeah. Uh, could you remind our audience what, what, uh, what is Income Training, what you do? Yeah, so Income Training is uh, they deliver um, training qualifications and consultancy to the engineering manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got eight niches, uh, including apprenticeships, health and safety, quality, continuous improvements, and so on and so forth. Okay, great. Uh, I mean, um, at the moment, the government is introducing the um, three million apprenticeship, which should be starting in 2020. What do you make of this apprenticeship plan? Well, uh, the key thing to remember is to make sure it's quality, not quantity. And I think that's been the problem in the past. The war, the focus has moved over to vocational training. So before, under the Labour government, it was very much about going to university, uh, free u university for everybody. And if you look at competencies, two things, which is um, knowledge and experience. And um, university gives you knowledge, but not also necessarily the experience, as where apprenticeships give you both at the same time. So you're actually walking the walk and learning as you go along. Previously, um, qualifications were derived from um, accrediting bodies such as City and Guilds, EAL, and they were deciding what was going to be in the makeup of that qualification. So, a maintenance engineer, quality engineer, welding, they would decide the units. Mm -hmm. Well, really, that's them telling industry what's good for them. And in, in, each, in each job, in each organisation, everybody exists and, and, and strives through niches. So, they need different things at different times, different skill sets. And under the trailblazers, it's now putting employers in the hot seat. So you've got to have 10 employers around the table, uh, a minimum of 20% representation from the SME market. And then they actually decide what goes into that qualification to become a standard. And now it's about outputs in terms of behaviours and competencies, rather than a big list of academic achievement. Okay, brilliant. And um, you are doing some work with other Made in Midlands members, uh, yep. Salop, um, Power Company, what, Coating, one of them. You yeah. mentioned something, uh, you mentioned about that in our last interview. Can you tell yeah. us more about the cooperation? Yep, so um, ourselves and Salop, and it was a big step for Salop uh, going into the world of education and apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. But we opened a training school in joint partnership, mm -hmm. and that was in September 2015. So far, we've had 40 engineer apprentices go through that. Um, initially, we invested in foundation engineering skills, mm -hmm. and we're just installing now all the advanced engineering, so hydraulics, pneumatics, uh, electrical controls, PLCs, uh, robotics. So it's gradually got bigger and bigger. The one problem that we are seeing though now is attracting young people into this sector. Mm -hmm. um, before, people said it wasn't very sexy, etc. So in Con currently, we've got 60 job vacancies. Mm -hmm. That's in Aldridge. We've got 10 job vacancies in Shrewsbury, and we're struggling to get the calibre of candidates that want to come into the industry. Nice. And then also over the last two years, we've upped the women in engineering by 75%. Mm -hmm. We've got a big focus on it, but there's still a lot more to do. Um, if I mean, if you look, if you become a teacher, you go through your GCSE stage, then you go on to do your A levels, you go to do a degree, your PGCE, then you do an NQT year. Mm -hmm. Then you become a, a qualified teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, they've never stepped out into industry, so how are they best placed then to nurture these children? Because it's all about opportunity and exposure. So the more people are exposed to it, the more attractive or the, or the guesstimate on a career choice is going to be much more educated choice. Um, but industry's got to hold its hands up as well and take um, take ownership too, not just at secondary school stage, but primary school stage, to open the doors, let them see what's happening behind the closed doors and factories, etc. Just to turn these kids on to, whether it's welding, casting. And there's a company in Birmingham that actually um, made the metals that's gone into the new pound coin. Mm -hmm. But when you go and see that being cast, it's absolutely outstanding. Mm -hmm. And it's jaw dropping. I mean, just up the road from here, we've got Moog Aircraft. Yeah. You know, uh, they make actuators. So they've got a rig set up there, and you can see an aeroplane um, mm -hmm. wing. I mean, that's fascinating for kids. It's a fantastic sector. Mm -hmm. it, uh, but we've all got to take ownership to make sure that we make it more attractive for youngsters. So, yeah. could you tell us more about the debate work you're doing with the yeah, University so of Wolverhampton? We uh, partnered, we were actually delivering a, a CI program in Moog some years mm -hmm. back now and it was quite obvious the barriers to learning. So mm -hmm. people have been in employment for 30, 40 years, that initial coming back into a classroom was massive. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we partnered with the University of Wolverhampton and we went for Erasmus funding, which we managed to get. Mm -hmm. So hopefully within the next two years, it's called the Aero Project, and that will be live and up and running for everybody to, to come and uh, it'll be free to the wider environment. So we, we, we're going to create a process mapping first, put that in, into the wider domain and then see where we go from there and develop it further. Fantastic. This is some fantastic news and, and, and updates that you're bringing to us today. Um, and I know you've got some announcements to make as well, so yeah. do you want to go ahead and tell us more about that? Yeah, so again, with the MCMT, we partnered with Ground Zero Model Solid Design and Engineering and Classic Motor Cars to uh, draw down funding and build a 36,000 square foot facility in Bridge North. That's due open in September, so please everybody come along. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, three weeks ago, we had an Ofsted report. And for the first time in our history, we got grade one outstanding straight across the board. Um, so we'll be releasing um, the Ofsted report very soon. So that put, puts us in the top 8% in the country. Because um, our brand moving forward is, is to become the elite. And we are currently planning on opening 12 technical centres across the UK, which including Ireland and Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, so touch wood again, within the next three years we should have around 14 academies nationwide. Right, so finally Gareth, can you tell us more about the apprenticeship levy, because it's very topical at the moment uh, and um, there's uh, massive changes into the, all the training providers yeah. and the businesses, can you tell us more about that and how it, it will impact the business and, and the apprentice? Well yeah, I mean there's some businesses now are saying that they are going to embrace the levy, yeah. there's others turning around saying I'm going to pay it and use it as a levy and not take on any more because of the headcount. Mm -hmm. Uh, but again, it's about us. It's about us all investing. So you get a lot of business leaders nowadays that actually came through an engineering apprenticeship, for instance, and have gone on to own their own company. So they, they did a robust apprenticeship, mm -hmm. but over a period of time, it got watered down by different uh, weaker provision. Mm -hmm. But the key message with the levy is: is you shouldn't let your levy drive your spend, mm -hmm. for instance. So you shouldn't just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, you've got to do it on a structured way, ensure that you, you look at the demographics of the workforce, your growth strategy, mm -hmm. um, people moving up out of positions, either getting promotions, etc. So if you're good on the tools, you get a promotion because you're good on the tools, but then there's not, it's a separate skill set. Mm -hmm. you know, leadership and man management is completely different, so now using the levy you can nurture these people. Okay, that's brilliant news and congratulations on the work Thank that you're you doing. Much. This is Cheers. actually very outstanding, um, as in the Pardon opposite the side. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so thank you very much Gareth for thank coming. You. Good luck with the f uh, future work and all the plans and goals that you've got ahead in the, in the, in the, in the schedule. Thank you very much for listening and um, look out for, the, for, for this space and we'll be bringing you some more interviews with uh, manufacturing and engineering leaders from the region.